Hello, 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 friends. Welcome to this week's episode of the Dateable Podcast. If you are new, welcome. We talk about everything dating. If you are not new, then you welcome back. You know exactly what we do here. You know what we're all about. But what is new is Julie's back from her Hawaiian vacation. Oh, and yes. <laughs> she might need a vacation from her vacation, but she is back. Oh, I 100% need a vacation. I think this whole week I've been moving at a snail's pace. Like, it has not been good. But it was, oh, it's so beautiful. Like, I feel like if listeners out there, I'm sure a lot of you have been to Hawaii, but I know a lot of people on the East Coast haven't. If you mm-hmm. can get the opportunity, it's just, it does not feel like you're in the United States. It feels like you've been transported to a magical paradise. And oh, I'm just like, could I just like relocate here? We can right? still do this podcast. You know, it's only a three hour difference. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I just won't come back on the plane. You know, I know. I mean, that's why so many people move there during COVID. It makes sense. Oh my sense. God. Yeah. I feel like, especially I was thinking about that for COVID. Cause I mean, obviously we want to pretend like we're out of the pandemic, but it's still here. Mm-hmm. Still around a quarter. Uh, my aunt was just telling me that she got it after vacation. So oh. still a thing. Um, but in Hawaii, like so much is outside, like even the airport's yeah. outside. So I feel like you have that working in your favor there for sure. Yeah. And it's just so beautiful that you want to be outside all the time. Oh my God. Yeah. So peaceful. <laughs> I did. I did discover my love for snorkeling. Like I've gone mm. before, but not, you know, I don't, I don't think I did it. I did like maybe like a very, very beginner version, like not even with mm-hmm. the flippers, just kind of like the headpiece go under for a few minutes when I in was a in bathtub. like yeah. the Bahamas, but <laughs> yes, bathtub, same difference. But I did, we went one, we went three times and one time we actually saw a turtle, which was amazing. <gasps> but turtles. you know, that is, I think the beauty of relationships is they do push you to do things that you wouldn't normally do. And I do love that about the partnership I'm in is like, you know, live music. I feel like I've been going to a lot of live music and Mm -hmm. I really do enjoy it. And it's not something I seeked out before. And I think snorkeling, like if I had gone on this trip with like a girlfriend, which I have done this trip, maybe not Kauai, but I did Maui with my one of my best friends and we didn't leave the resort the whole time. (laughs) We're just like... (laughs) But, you know, it's like it does push you to try different things. And I think that is really healthy in a relationship. We also did a kayak and yes. hike. And then we swam under a waterfall. And the hike was oh my hard. Gosh. But, like, I think that stuff is like really good. Like that, like my partner pushes me to do more active stuff like that, which is it's it's healthy. That's oh, yeah. I mean, that's just so wonderful to create new memories. Mm hmm with each other I know people who are like I would never go back to this place because I went there with my ex and my response is always like you can create new memories you know you can yeah yeah do new things try new things with this person and then you'll forget about the ex or the memories with the ex that's true I think the other thing I've done before that's empowering is I wanted to go somewhere with an ex and we had the plans to but it never happened Mm. so you never had the memory but you kind of the place reminded you of them but it was actually really empowering going on my own because I'm kind of like fuck it I'm still doing it you know it doesn't matter if I have a partner or not and that's super empowering yes yes and if you are this applies to everyone even if you're not in a relationship it just helps to know that you can create these memories yourself and you can push yourself to do these new things you don't have to wait for a partner to do so because once you gain a partnership you never know what else is out there like you never know what they're gonna you know inspire you to do and what you inspire them to do it's there's so much so much yeah it kind of makes me think of our episode today too does it (laughs) well like the starting over you know like starting fresh yeah and like using this time that you're basically went from having the identity of being married and we're you know we're talking about dating as single parents today specifically from the viewpoint of a single father i think 
you know, there are nuances between single mothers for sure. So yeah. want to keep that in mind. But um, I do think like there's a lot of, you know, unraveling your past to create this new identity. And I'm sure there's been situations too that come up that remind you of your old life. Essentially, you have like a new life that you're creating. But mm -hmm. this episode we wanted to do because we've heard a lot of people say and write in like, I'm afraid this is holding me back. Like it's making me undateable. And we wanted to prove that it is not doing that. Yeah, I think so many people, everything, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, But <laughs> we tend to say stuff like it's the end of the world if this happens. And I think yeah. when it comes to marriage and divorce and divorce with kids and then starting over as a single parent, a lot of people think it's like, oh, my God, end of the world. How can how can I do that? <laughs> I got to stay in this marriage just so I don't have to start over. I got to st stay in something toxic just so I don't have to start over. And our guest today, as, as well as millions of other people, will prove that it's never the end of the world. Nothing is the end of the world until it's the end of the world. There is always a place to start. And it's not starting over, it's starting from experience. Yes. And sometimes we really need that reset. So it's not even about like, oh my gosh, I have to... I have to rewrite everything in my life now. It's it's not about that. And you never know what could happen in life. This is why we're always like, you know what? The the success metrics of a relationship is not the longevity or the that you got a, you got married, you got a certificate, you have a ring on your finger. That is not the metric for success. The metric for success is actually your relationship with yourself. Are you kind to yourself? after mm -hmm. a relationship is over are you forgiving are you empathetic towards yourself are you prioritizing yourself that's the metric for success so one of our mutual friends ended a really long relationship and i remember having a call a talk with him after mm -hmm. this and he mentioned this book which is escaping me right this minute but i do want to look it up and maybe see if they'd be a good guest but basically this idea that in today's worlds we're not meant to have one relationship we're mm -hmm. meant to have a series of different relationships whatever length they may be and if we c it's be only becomes problematic because we've been thought like we've been taught that we're supposed to have one one relationship yeah. only and it's supposed to last forever but if we accept that like maybe it won't and that's okay it kind of reminds me too of the episode we did with dr gladys otto too mm -hmm. of you know i think that one <laughs> for anyone that's going through the trenches of a breakup a divorce yeah whatever like go back and listen to that episode like even pause this episode and go listen to that one because that one even for someone like m myself that isn't currently going through that, it was so helpful to reframe that you're just opening the new chapter. And like, how do you keep thinking about it that way? And I like it for someone that feels anxiety around that type of stuff to like think about it now before it's even happening. It sounds weird, but it like does kind of make me feel better that like if something were to happen, like I can bounce back. Like you said, mm -hmm. the true measure is your own relationship. Our society focuses so much on the beginning and the end markers that we yes. don't focus yes. on the transitional state. And it, it, the same goes for like getting the homeless off the street, getting professional athletes after they retire back into the workforce. We just don't focus on transitioning people back. And same with divorces. I've always, I've joked about this with uh, my partner's cousin who was going through a divorce. I was like, what if, what if there's a business, it's like a halfway house where people are going through divorce, you have everything that you need, the legal yeah. support, the emotional support, you can even meet other singles who are in the same situation. And you stay in this house for a few months until you feel ready to get back on your feet. Because we are so focused on like, just get, you know, get yourself out there. You know, just there's plenty of fish in the sea. You can do this. You don't need a. You don't need to focus on this previous relationship. But the transition part of relationships is almost more important than the relationships themselves. Yeah, and I mean, you and I 
have not been married. We have not been divorced, so we don't fully know. You and I, I are basically pa- married, though. <laughs> okay, well, luckily we have not been divorced from each other yet. <laughs> <laughs> but you, your partner went through this, and you know other people, mm-hmm. too. And from what I like from who like the people I've talked to and members of our community and I'm sure this isn't everyone I don't want to generalize divorce like stings harder than the average breakup like it Mm -hmm. almost feels like a failure like the way our society portrays it and I think some of it's just because there's so much I don't know it's almost like you're so in the spotlight with marriage that Mm -hmm. like you kind of feel like I mean, I don't want to put words in people's mouths, but like for what, what I've heard from people, it's like, I almost feel stupid that I did this, that it's like this whole, like, you know, tr- like pony, like dog and pony show yeah. and then it's over. Yeah. I think a lot of people would say that. Why? I'm so dumb for even going through that if I knew this would be the outcome. I was also thinking after stalking someone <laughs> a few years ago, seeing his wedding video I wonder how many photographers and videographers have a graveyard of this footage of people who are no longer together, you know, like, uh, how do you remove it from the internet? Because it's kind of on there forever. But yeah, it's, it, it does, people have told me that it it does sting harder because society places so much pressure on you to make it work. And also you go through so much just to show the world that you're married yeah. it's like it's so shameful public. it's so yes. public yeah you could be in a relationship and nobody has to know but if you're married apparently you need to tell the whole world like the new york times i still don't understand the new york times engagement i don't either i do not either like why why do i need to know their pedigree like this person went to harvard i don't I know like that's <laughs> so old-fashioned i mean I, I definitely remember that from sex of the city explicitly like <sighs> so you know weird. And then that gutting feeling, like when Carrie saw Big and Natasha in there. Yes. Like for all your yes. exes that are just seeing that. Oh my God. What a oh my, why? sucker punch. Who needs punch. to know? Who needs to know any of that? Why does any of that need to be public? I get that you want to celebrate, but the announcement to the world to strangers, I will never understand. But the point of this, this kind of conversation is to say that who cares who cares what society yeah. thinks right end of the day it's you and your relationship with yourself you got to protect yourself and you know what you're in the media blip so-called media blip for two days and then people forget about you. right right <laughs> i mean i've even thought about that like even just like posting instagram stories like you mm-hmm. know just like things that are public like there is something that comes with it but then at the same time, it's like, well, I can't, you can't be like fearful of that. Like that was, that is right. your life. That is your truth. And God forbid, like if something does happen, like that's also your truth. And that's kind of, yeah, you just need to roll with it. Like there's no, it like, what world are we in that you're just like holding into like onto it. And so, so like, so secretively, like that's not the answer either. No, don't let the fear drive you. If we were all driven by fear, we would do nothing. We'd just be at a standstill, twiddling our thumb, not leaving our houses, not engaging with people. That is a fear-ridden lifestyle. And there's, there's no room in your life for that. Life is too short to be driven by fear. Yeah, I think like... It came to that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's like the epitome of so many things that we talk about. Like that is the root of it, right? It's like yeah. the biggest danger is not doing anything at all. <laughs> like that's what's really dangerous. Is. Go do something, guys. Go do something. Yeah. And you come out ahead, you know, if nothing else. Like we were saying, it's just a new chapter of your life. And even looking at like my past relationships, like they all grow on each other. Like mm-hmm. It's hard to see it in the moment, but like looking back in retrospect, I'm sure all of our listeners, if we took a minute to audit our lives, like we could see how like different relationships have set us up for the next one and how we've changed along the way. Like that's the most important thing. That's the only thing you can control at the end of the day. <laughs> it truly is. <laughs> it truly is. Especially when Mercury <sighs> is in retrograde, you're like, ah, I have no control of anything in my life. 
except for well, myself and my thoughts. You know what else you can control? 22 day <laughs> online dating reset challenge. Oh, you knew where I was going with it. You knew where I was going with it. You control the dating apps. Everyone always says the dating apps control me and I no. call bullshit on that. You control the dating apps and our 22 day dating app challenge. You've heard us talk about it now for the last month. We started this in the beginning of December, or beginning of October. October. And I'm like, what month are we in? Beginning of October. And it will be, the offer will end on October 31st. And cuffing season also starts around Halloween. So that means you got to get on it. This next week is, is it? You know, this next week is... Your last chance. Make or break. <laughs> Make or break. Get, you you people train for marathons. You got to train for cuffing season. You know, we got like, we got the resources to train you for cuffing season. So you win. There's no winning in dating, but you win in my eyes. Yep. Don't you want to go home to Thanksgiving, tell someone about the new person in your life, or maybe you get so confident from it that you're just like, fuck it. I don't need to impress anyone. <laughs> That's also a side effect of this. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, if you want to sign up, get in there now. Uh, there are limited spots as well, and we are nearing the end. So, dateable or findingyourperson.com slash apps. That is your ticket in, and you can also check that out in the show notes.